This is the installation and operator training video for the Buck Scientific Model 910 gas chromatograph with heated injector and FID detector for Empire Winery and Distillery in Newport Ritchie, Florida. The GC system requires hydrogen and helium gases connected to the left side of the GC to create the flame for the FID and provide the carrier gas for the system. Under the lid of the GC are your injection ports and the column oven. This is the heated injector and we will now show how to connect up a capillary column to the heated injector to do your analysis. When the system is first installed, it is necessary to connect the column to the injection port. The stainless steel capillary column is used for most fermented beverage analysis. You will use a stainless steel nut and the graphite ferrule that is designed for use with the Megabore capillary GC columns. Take one end of the column, slide the nut over the end of the column, and then slide the flat end of the graphite ferrule over the end of the column being careful not to scrape any of the soft graphite and gently sliding it onto the end of the column. Remove the septum nut where the syringe makes the injection on the front of the GC and put it aside and then using the column poke it through so that the column heater from the injection port and the capillary needle guide come out the front of the GC. This is the correct procedure for installing the capillary column in the heated injector. Push the end of the column so that it comes out the front of the injection port. Insert the heated liner with a small vent hole on the front so that the column goes through and slide the heated liner into the injection port. Now you have the capillary needle guide which has a small slot cut toward the front end of the needle guide. Insert the column approximately halfway through using your finger to roughly position it and then carefully push the needle guide into the heated injection liner. Put the septum nut back on the front of the GC, finger tight. And then from within the oven, you want to push the nut with the graphite ferrule to the rear fitting of the injection port and tighten it finger tight and then using an adjustable wrench go three quarters of a turn past finger tight grab the end of the column and try to pull if it doesn't move 
the ferrule is tight enough to give you a good gas tight seal. Next, we need to connect the outlet end of the GC column to the GC detector. In this case, we're using an FID detector on the opposite side of the GC remove the safety cap from the end of the column place the nut over the end of the column slide the graphite ferrule again carefully twisting it so that you don't clog the end of the column with graphite and then insert this into the FID fitting to properly position the end of the column in the FID detector use an adjustable wrench to remove the cap nut from the FID detector and put aside looking down into the FID detector body insert the column till you see the end just barely come out the nozzle of the FID jet and pull back approximately one or two millimeters at this point tighten the nut by hand and again using the wrench, tighten three quarters of a turn past finger tight to create the gas tight seal. This will ensure proper operation of the FID with good response from the peaks. Again grab the end of the column and give a gentle tug to make sure it is secure. Replace the cap nut on the FID detector and just finger tighten that. Center the column in the oven. And the GC is ready to begin operation. Just follow this procedure should you need to change columns or replace the existing column. Close the lid to the GC oven and we're ready to check our parameters such as the gas flow and temperatures before doing any analysis. This is the procedure for preparing a 100 part per million working standard to calibrate the GC instrument. 100 parts per million is the equivalent of 0.1 grams per liter. You will need glass storage vials to hold the diluted standard, the concentrated calibration material, a digital pipette to measure small volumes of the standard, and deionized water to make the dilution. Please note that the acetaldehyde is run as a separate standard because it is not stable when mixed with all of the other materials. So we will prepare 100 part per million acetaldehyde separately and run that by itself to make our complete calibration table. One of the first things we need to do is to open the sealed ampules for the calibration materials. Let us prepare the acetaldehyde standard first and we will mark our glass storage vial calling it 100 ppm acetaldehyde.
Remove the ampule from the adhesive paper. And the neck has already been scored to allow you to break it. It is recommended to use some paper towels and just snap the neck so that you can measure out the material from within the vial. Now the acetaldehyde is prepared at a 1,000 part per million level according to the label and we will need to dilute that 1 milliliter to 10 milliliters with deionized water. Using your digital pipette set to 1 milliliter Carefully remove one milliliter of the concentrated acetaldehyde and then using a graduated cylinder add nine milliliters of water. A pipette can also be used to dilute the one milliliter of acetaldehyde standard to 10 milliliters final volume. So we will now measure out 9 milliliters in the pipette. And add that to the acetaldehyde standard making a 1 to 10 dilution which will give us 100 ppm in this solution. Tap the vial, shake it to mix properly, and in the refrigerator this will be stable for approximately one month. You can also pour the remaining half milliliter of the concentrated standard into the small screw cap vial and again keep in the refrigerator for future use. A small label is included and comments can be made on the vial as well. We will do the same thing for the mixture of alcohols and esters which are present at 2,000 parts per million on the label. So we will need to do a 1 to 20 dilution of this material. Again, using paper towel, tap it to make sure all the fluid is down low. Snap the neck of the ampule. And again, mark the vial so you know that this is going to be a 100 ppm mixed standard of all the other alcohols, aldehydes, and ketones present in this material. Again, again since this is